Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Uh, great to see everybody. NFT.NYC. Um, I don't know about you guys, but like as soon as I got in today, so I got in a little late. Um, Mickey, if you're back there, please join us on stage. I thought I saw him a second ago, but as soon as I got into New York City, um, I'm from California, so just seeing the city just gives me a lot of energy and excitement. NFTs do in general as well, but um, yeah, I'm the CEO and co-founder of NFT Genius. Um, we are an NFT production company. Uh, we created several successful sets, including Ballers that's on the Flow blockchain, Rebel Rabbits that's on Ethereum as well, and we're a pretty much early innovator and really kind of bringing storytelling as an element into the NFT space uh, very early on with a set called Bitcoin Origins on the Wax blockchain. Uh, in essence, we highlighted all the significant moments of Bitcoin uh, into a scarce collection of cards and uh, you know, from there, we just uh, started building across multiple blockchains and, and just trying to test and iterate and find what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Come, on, Come up. on up. <laughs> right. We love a brand grand entrance. So uh, we got Mickey here as well. Mickey's from, you want to make the introduction? Uh, yeah, I'm from Dapper Labs, uh, SVP of partnerships, uh, been at Dapper I don't know, four years, maybe four and a half years, something like that. And I was called in uh, about five minutes ago, so I rushed over uh, to support my friend Jeremy on, uh, I guess, a two-person panel with a moderator. So that's great. There you go. So I'd love to ask you guys, you know, why NFTs? Why NFTs? Why NFTs? Uh, I'll be honest with you. It has nothing to do with NFTs. So... Um, if, if everyone can bear with me, I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I got into it. Um, so I started my career in this space, and that's key because I'm way older than who have started my career in 2007, but started my career in this space in uh, 2007. And what I was doing in 2007 is I joined a very early stage startup. I was the sixth employee, seventh employee, something like that. And we were building experimental applications on the Facebook platform uh, into the social graph uh, right when they launched it, right? Um, so we were the, one of the first builders into the Facebook social graph, which ended up netting Zynga, Farmville, and a bunch of other highly successful companies. Um, my company got acquired by a major corporation. Um, I, I decided to leave there in 2011 to explore uh, the mobile or mobile application space on smartphones um, as it was just kind of burgeoning. Uh, this is 11. Uh, so 07, 2011, I saw the birth, the maturation, the growth, and then ultimately the plateau of both the Facebook application gaming platform as well as um, in 2017, the mobile plateau. I mean, I think I was a little early on the plateau, maybe 2018. But anyway, I saw, I saw the growth of mobile kind of start coming to an end in 17. So uh, because I did it twice, I, I said there's got to be a new growth paradigm or new growth platform for consumer applications. And I didn't know where that was going to be. The common thinking at the, that point in 17 was this is going to be VR, Oculus, whatever. I, I didn't believe it. I think that's, we're still years away from that. Um, and I was always crypto curious. You know, I got into the kind of the ICO thing, not, I didn't launch an ICO, but I was experimenting with ETH and Bitcoin in 2017. So I had a, uh, I was following crypto Twitter and sometime at the end of 2017, I started to see crypto kitties pop up everywhere on my, uh, on my feed. And so I decided to check it out, try it. And, uh, Instantly, it reminded me of very early Facebook, very early mobile, experimental, not, you know, cute cats, but not the most in-depth game, not the most uh, polished design, just experimenting for what the technology was meant for. Uh, and, and I was sold. So sometime Q1 of 2018, I, I joined Dapper Labs. That's amazing. Jeremy, do you want to follow that up? <laughs> Jeez. It was long. I'm so sorry. That's crazy. People are asleep. <laughs> uh, similar experience in the sense that, you know, uh, came from the mobile um, app development side of things as well. Did mobile games, realized as an indie developer, just similar to like anything you do entrepreneurially, even getting into the crypto space, uh, you know, developed a game. 
got to the top of the charts, realized that there's, you know, the, the kings, the candy crushes, and these guys that are spending millions of dollars in ads every day, and you're just going to plummet to the bottom of the charts unless you have that kind of ad spend. So going through all that and getting into the crypto space, being an avid basketball card and sports card collector my entire life, for me, NFTs just made sense. Um, yeah, some people might have been here long enough to remember Wax when they first came out with their first NFTs. That's kind of what got me hooked. You know, I saw Crypto Kitties, didn't do anything with it. And I saw Garbage Pail Kids, you know, this nostalgic. It's the first thing that came out that I saw where I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But why would you collect a digital Garbage Pail Kid? Like, it didn't make sense, right? You're, so I get my you're, da you're dating yourself even worse than I did. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. There's a lot of gray here. But, um, um, you know, I saw them. It was about 120,000 cards that they were selling. Uh, they ran of tees. And it took them about 28 hours to sell out. And I said, okay, cool. There, there's something here. The next set they came out, they partnered with Tiger King, and it took them about an hour to sell out. And so I saw this accelerating. So I come from a digital marketing background, mobile gaming, and I've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, and I've never seen anything that accelerated this quickly in terms of adoption. The next one sold out in an hour, and it was William Shatner, right? Cards from his personal collection of photos. Like, who cares about that? Maybe a lot of people in this audience, so sorry. Um, so with all that said, then I saw NBA Top Shot, and I said, wow, NBA Top Shot, this is a digital pack of cards, this is a huge organization, and I just knew it was gonna be huge, so I signed up, I was the early beta user there. Uh, I remember the days in which you could buy maybe eight or nine legendary packs at a time, I couldn't even get one today, there was a legendary drop. Um, so just been here since the very early phases of the space, testing, iterating, and just seeing how fast this thing is growing, yet we're still so early in its existence, and everything that everybody's doing on all these floors here, it's correct, it's right. Right? We should be testing, we should be failing every single day to try to figure out what this ultimately is gonna turn into because what we see right now in terms of what NFTs are, in my opinion, is not what ultimately they're gonna become and won't be the strongest use case, right? So it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. Mr. Shatner's in the back corner there. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry, I apologize. You, yeah. Now I don't normally moderate and I see a big clock that's saying four minutes, so I'll give you guys two minutes each to answer this next question. What's in the future for both of you? or what's currently going on that you want to discuss, considering this is a surprise panel? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I aim to please. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Um, we, we got into the business Dapper Labs um, always to figure out the avenue, the on-ramp to the mass market, right? Like uh, in 2017, it was, you know, just people speculating, investing in crypto. Um, and we knew as a company in, in, in our DNA that, hey, uh, banking or finance wasn't gonna be the on-ramp to the billions. So we're always trying to push the envelope forward in terms of gamifying products, building social, figuring out how, I mean, it, we're talking about NFTs. It's really not about NFTs, it's about smart contracts. NFTs are just, something smart contracts enable, but it's really the smart contract infrastructure that uh, pushes this space forward. And, and when we build and when we think about building, what we're building for is to build a direct connection between creators and IP, fans and brands, taking out the middleman and allowing, when I say direct correction, our direct connection, allowing fans, to, creators to have control over things that they love, properties they love. You know, that's the DAO concept. These are all these experimental concepts, but at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is um, companies, professional developers will build core experiences, and then their audience and their fans and their developer community will build around that, leveraging the openness of smart contracts. So, uh, that's the metaverse, in my opinion, like it's just you put a smart contract out there and let the world of developers utilize it. Uh, that's, that's the future in my mind. So you're saying you're building a metaverse? Uh, we, we, everything we build is a metaverse. It, like even like Top Shot, right? Um, there are, I don't know how many developers now building off of Top Shot, uh, DeFi platforms, marketplaces, uh, it, you know, he's doing it. Um, there's collaborations that we could do you know, with some of your uh, first party IP and our stuff. So it's already happening, it's just not obvious yet. Jeremy, would you like to tell us about your marketplace and your IPs and 
all of that very interesting stuff for the future you have planned. Absolutely. We have about a minute and 40 seconds. Um, I just wanted to tell a little anecdote. All started with Jody over here, right? Um, if you remember NFT day back in the day, one of the first ever, if not the first ever virtual conference for NFTs uh, that we threw with the bad crypto guys and cred um, supported that in NFT packages early on and nobody knew how to redeem anything. It was a shit show, right? But at the end of the day, such early innovators. So congrats and congrats and all this. And uh, it's awesome. But I'm just one small guy uh, in a greater scheme of things in a big picture. All six and four of you, small guy. <laughs> oh, wait till he stands out. Right? <laughs> no I'm uh, 4'11", so. Just uh, happy enough to get, uh, you know, uh, support from people like Flo and Mickey. Mickey believed in us really early on. Actually, I met Mickey at NFT Day, which is kind of crazy. Full circle right now. Um, wow, I just realized is that, that. Is that where we met? That's where we met. You were a speaker at our conference. Mickey oh, believed no. in us. Uh, and now, you know, we're partnered with Dapper Labs and uh, we're building the biggest marketplace on, on, on the Flow ecosystem called Gaia, uh, on Gaia.com. Uh, launched our set Ballers, uh, ended up being really successful and now we get to work with some really incredible people, but really built that marketplace to onboard the masses and help creators build on the Flow ecosystem because there's just so many incredibly talented people out there and just happy to be a part of it. So, I really felt that bro moment, you guys. That was a bro moment yeah. and I felt it. It was like a three-way. J- Jeremy and I are tight, so. Yeah. Absolutely, come on, come on. No, I, More the surprises, the better. Can I add to the bro moment? Yes, please um, bro it out. Throw so, it up. Thank you, thank you for those kind words. I do remember those days. Um, I'm going to embarrass you. Oh, I love it. Oh, please do. Uh, um, just be careful because I'm better <laughs> at it than you are. <laughs> so I've known Mickey for many years. We've, um, we've talked in Santa Monica. We've maybe all over the world we've talked. Um, and uh, one of the things that distinguishes Flow is that it has extraordinary partnerships with brands. Um, I... I had a session this morning with Roham, your boss, and you guys have just done this extraordinary job of connecting our technology to consumers. And one of our values at NFT NYC has always been, and the number three value is proselytize or share NFTs with the broader community. And it really is thank you to what Flow has done that you've you've introduced people who wouldn't normally care about crypto to the space. And now the bit about Mickey. I think Mickey is the smartest biz dev sales and marketing executive in the industry. So let's hear it for Mickey. Agreed. Ooh. It's because I'm an engineer at heart, so. Um, so I, wanna, I, I just want to, can I, I know we're time, just 20 seconds, because I don't think people know, when you say, uh, we built the blockchain for the masses. They're like, yeah, what, what the hell does that mean, right? Um, what we did was building in the Ethereum ecosystem, we knew there was a fundamental problem that we knew that 99% of users or consumers were not going to go through the MetaMask process, not f- going to figure out how to hold custody of their keys, all of that, right? Touch gas. So we, when we built Flow, we took like a first principles approach and we just said, hey, if you're gonna build a blockchain for my grandfather or my lawyer, what does that look like? And that basically what that looks like is it takes everything crypto, puts it under the hood, and allows you to onboard and transact like you would in any Web2 or normal type of experience. And the idea there is you get everyone in, and then the ones that want to learn more about crypto in, you know, uh, hold their private keys and, and get into that mess, they, they can find their way into it. But the key is getting a billion users into it. And so we've we started with, hey, how do we build on wraps for the mass market? And, and then the rest is kind of supporting that. You did it and you executed we, Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Isn't that why, well Jeremy, done. you chose Flow for Gaia? That's correct. We started with the Dapper Wallet. You can buy with a credit card. And now guess what we're going to do? We just announced that we're moving into buying Flow or um, buying NBA Top Shot with Flow. So, I mean, the person that cares about diving deeper is going to have that opportunity. Well, the yep. other thing that Roham told me this morning was developers very shortly will be allowed to just do their own smart contracts on Flow. So, it's becoming open. Uh, yeah. You know, we created a new smart contract language and we're all about safety for developers and users. So, we had to make sure that smart contract language was secure. So, we provided audits for all of our developers, but come, I don't want to, put dates on it, but August-ish, 
you'll be able to permissionlessly deploy onto Flow. So there no longer will be required audits, but audits if you want them. Roham gave us a date this morning. He said but, the next 30 days. <laughs> uh, that's welcome. why I don't give dates. <laughs> Thank so you. does anybody want Thank to tell you. their um, social media outlets before they get off stage? Uh, not really. No. I'm not, I mean, I, you can find me. I'm not really a self-promoter. I don't, I don't post much, but uh, if you want to learn about Flow, um, it's, I, think, I actually don't even know my Twitter handle. I think it's Mickey Maher 20, or Mickey M 23, something like that. But, you have a nice PFP too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he created a PFP of me, and that's my... Profile picture. Jeremy underscore born if you want to follow us or nftgenius.com. Thank you. Thanks.